All the naturally growing sequoias are growing in the Sierra Nevada in California. And one half of all of them are in the giant Sequoia National Monument, which didn't even exist until the year 2000. Two and a half years after the monument was declared, the logging was to end. It's been five years, and the logging is just getting into high gear. They're ignoring the proclamation. They're going right ahead, logging it like crazy. And we'd better get this place into the national park system. That's our first step. It's said reliably that not 4% of all the native forest in America remains. And that's almost entirely in the West Coast states. And there's so little of it left. You just have to fly over it and look down and look at the clear cuts. To have history look upon us, not as destroyers, but as saviors of something, we'd better act now. Here, we have our own land, not privately owned, owned by us. We're the people who own this, we should take care of it, we should make the rules. There's so little left of all of our forests that we should cherish every single native spot. We can only save it from ourselves by leaving it alone, and we can enjoy it that way. John Muir called them the noblest forests of the world. This national monument was supposed to be protected, saved, kept, never touched, except that a few years of logging were allowed to continue in order that the timber sales already made could be honored, as they say. Well, this is a typical giant sequoia. It happens to be in the so-called Long Meadow Grove in the Giant Sequoia National Monument. The Giant Sequoia National Monument, created by presidential proclamation, holds approximately 50% of all the giant sequoia trees left on Earth, and yet it's cared for by the United States Forest Service. The man in charge of the Forest Service now in Washington, at cabinet level, is Mark Ray, a former lobbyist for the timber industry. That's what he did until George Bush made him the head of the agency running the Forest Service. It's like putting the fox in charge of the chicken house. This tree has stood here for six centuries, a healthy, sturdy sugar pine. The real reason for taking this down was to get it to the sawmill. That's the only reason. Uh, they will use the term, it was a hazard tree. Oh, this tree is hazardous. It might fall on somebody. That's true of every tree in the world, even the ones that are planted along our city streets. Every tree is going to fall someday, and the chances of it falling on someone are so f remote 
it's not even worth considering. And then they say, oh, we've got to take them away before they burn up. Over all the eons of the past, the forest always burned up, but they didn't all burn up, and they didn't burn up completely, and they don't now. Fire produces benefits in the forest, keeps the forest going. And as long as the Forest Service is in charge, it will find excuses for destroying our forests. These trees have been known to be 325 feet tall. Now, the roots are very shallow in these trees. They never go more than four feet into the ground. It doesn't take much to push a big one over. Logging around these trees involves machinery that tears up the soil and actually cuts off the root. We just have to get these forests saved, and the only way for this one is to put the giant Sequoia National Monument out of the hands of the Forest Service and into the National Park Service where these wonderful forests belong.